Oh, oh really? Oh, did you? oh, I can't wait to see Ooh. it. Yeah, Jana, I forgot. Right, I meant bye. to. I meant to like say how excited I am to work with you oh, yeah, on same. Mika's film. Same. I'm so pumped. I'm asking Holly and Chiquetti to be my first and second. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. You know, uh, Holly's my DP. Hell yeah, I didn't know that. Josh, did you see your Facebook page? I did, yeah. Did you like I, what? Josh, Josh, Ula. Yeah. <laughs> Timko. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, bye. Alrighty. Are How we are you guys doing? We're already Good. recording? Yeah, yeah, we're oh, already man. recording this. Oh. Like, the little, like, beforehand banter is, like, very important to hey, this. did you get your coffee? I did get my coffee. Thank you for getting me a coffee. JD, Welcome. just make sure you're a little bit closer to the, to the microphone. Mic. Make sure I'm yeah. nice and close. You can move it. Can yeah, you can move the mic. Yeah, you can it's manipulate it. It'll stay where you want it that. to go. Get no, comfy. I'm just sure. Nice. Well, good. That's good. You, I'm excited for you guys to, to be here and to talk about Puppy Brother. Yeah. And I, it's going to be super, like, informal. Don't feel like you have to, like, answer questions super seriously or anything. I don't even know how to do that, so that's I okay. I don't feel good. that way. I don't <laughs> yeah, yeah that I, don't way. Know, I don't know how much you What's guys... What's formal? Have, yeah, I don't <laughs> know how much really? you guys have been interviewed in the past, but, like... Uh, for your jobs. Yeah, exactly. Well, really this is not a job interview, I promise. So I'm not getting the job. I've been no, on the podcast not. before, so. Nice. Okay. Nice. You've cool. been you've been on the show. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. That was fun. Actually, you, well, I'm, I'm sure I've told you this a million times. At the end of every episode of any Take a Breather Noise in the Head episode, um, I add that, like, so much chunk, little little sound bite at the end of it. Do you remember that? Did I say that? You did, yeah. <laughs> oh, my we God. Were, we were like... <laughs> We were like, yeah, we had that chunk at the beginning, and you were like, so much chunk. Oh, my God. Um, so I, I, I have, like, a little sound bite at the end of every episode. Go go, go look for it. It's I great. love that. That's so yeah. funny. <laughs> yeah, for anyone out there listening, that was Jana who said that. So much chunk. That's me, Jana. Cool. Actually, you know so that's a, a, a good segue, segue into this. Let's uh, <laughs> let's introduce ourselves. So over here I have. I'm Jana Firestone. Yeah. Was I supposed to say my full name? <laughs> you Jana. can You could retract it if you want. What do you play? I play guitar and I sing in Puppy Brother. Cool. Hi, cool. my name's Neve. I am also a singer and guitar player in Puppy Brother. Neve. He is Puppy Brother. He, we just yeah. support him. It's a, uh, Puppy Brother's a pu- puppy communal. Brother. I'm the puppy mother. We're all puppies. <laughs> 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 all right, good. Um, Neve, is that, what is that, what is it? how is, did you get that nickname? Oh, uh, well, you know what it is? Uh, me and another close friend of mine both were called JD. Uh, I mean, my mom calls me JD. Okay. Uh, when she's mad, John Dominic. Okay. Little backstory. John Dominic. Just delicious. Yeah. Just delicious. If you're my, if you're a parent of a person I'm dating. <laughs> <laughs> um, but anyway, uh, yeah. So like, all my friends just kind of call me Neve because my last name's Del Nevo. Del Nevo. Okay. So it's just a little. Uh, all right, that makes sense. Nice. You know. John Dominic though, that has such a nice ring to it. It's only like allowed for like people who are mad at me. Or, uh, really? I yeah. say it a lot. Now. I was gonna say that. Shauna's like, usually mad at me. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, so, it, like you said, Puppy Brother was it started with with JD, right? So, um, I sort of just want to go into a little bit of like the history of Puppy Brother. But actually, before I do that, let's go into the history of like music for both of you. Sure. Like sure. when did when did music sort of enter your life in a way that you thought to yourself, "Hey, I could do that," or "Hey, I should do that." Uh, do you want to start? We'll start with Shauna. Okay, yeah. cool. Um, I don't know. I was introduced to music and musical instruments at, like, the age of two. So it's always been a really big factor in my life. Uh, both of my parents are singer-songwriters, and I grew up around a piano in the living room and my dad playing and my mom singing and all the oldies. Mm-hmm. So, uh, I don't know. That really introduced me to music. I used to go through my parents' vinyls and vinyl records excuse to say. me <laughs> vinyl <laughs> records <laughs> uh and they had a turntable and i used to make my babysitters uh, put on bad by michael jackson the yeah. whole record and i used to dance to it and then uh, i started playing guitar and i stuck with guitar and singing well, what age did you start playing guitar i got my first guitar with nylon strings when i was like four years old yeah wow, okay um i got a crappy guitar when i was like 13 mm-hmm. and that's when I really started playing and now I have a nice guitar and I'm 22 yeah. <laughs> nice yeah and and so Jana um you you are part of another band I am correct mm-hmm. what is that band called we're called big fan wonder if the ghosts are for us wonder if the ghosts are for us wonder if the ghosts are for us
Yeah. And I am a vocalist in that band. Cool. How long has that band been, been going? Now? It'll be two years this coming January. Cool. Yeah. Cool. And you guys are working on getting some stuff recorded We're at some trying. point. I don't want to stress you out with that. It's stressful. I, okay. But, I understand. Uh, I, I we could drop it. it there. I just That's wanted okay. to drop the name out there so everyone can cool. yeah, take a look when fan. you guys are big and famous. Huh. Um, big and famous. Big yeah. and famous. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, JD? Cool. Uh, yeah, so I don't know. I've always kind of like similar like to genre. Uh, music's always been a very big thing within my family. Um, my mom used to do like a lot of dancing and stuff like that. She's very big in the disco. So uh, my mom was a single parent. So a lot of car rides were spent listening to KTU, which was a lot of like <laughs> disco music and stuff <laughs> like that. So uh, I which just now just, I'm subjected to because of <laughs> I you. love disco music. Like Earth, Wind and Fire is like one of the coolest bands. That's weird. Opinion. Listening to Puppy Brother, I wouldn't get that vibe. But <laughs> you know, it's funny. You a lot of throw, people say you that. Should <laughs> some, you should throw some disco in your next record. Trying to, Let's honestly. That would be sweet. Funky. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, so it's kind of funny because like the disco stuff led to like me liking funk music for a bit. So I got really okay. into uh, in high school. I was very into like the Red Hot Chili Peppers and Weezer. Okay, not so much funk on the Weezer end, but yeah, um, yeah, but still, yeah. So I was like really into that, and I was like, you know what? I really like the Chili Peppers a lot. I would love to make a band. Um, so I started playing in bands from. Uh oh, <laughs> a pen I fell. I started playing in bands back in like 2009, 2008 or so. Okay. And uh, eventually I was in this band called Little World. Which was with a lot of my best friends and also included um, our drummer Aaron Mossy, who's in uh, Poppy Brother with us. Right. And uh, it's funny because one of the songs we play Circle Tree from our record mm -hmm. is actually originally a Little World song that we wrote. I did not know that. Yeah, a little Ooh. fun fact. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I did that for a little, couple years. Um, eventually I was in a project called Homeschool. That was just me. And then I'd say, um, I remember when I played the first Poppy Brothers show, but I like I took the name for that band from a, I think it was like an AT&T commercial. <laughs> where like this like uh, this guy's like, oh yeah, if you guys had one wish, what would it be? And he's talking this, to kids. Yeah, he's talking to like little kids at yeah. a table. And one of the girls is like, oh, I wish my brother was a puppy. Because I could bring him to show and tell him, I could be like, hey, everybody, this is my puppy brother. <laughs> and, Whoa. And, like, that was a thing that I've, like, wanted to make a band around for the last, like, three or four years <laughs> yeah. when that commercial was relevant. Hey, future me, I try to find that commercial and, like, put That's that little sound clip in here. That'd be, <laughs> oh, be yeah. Cool. What would you buy with all this money you saved? I'd buy a changer machine so I could change my brother into a puppy. Couldn't you just buy an actual puppy? Yeah, but if my brother's a puppy, I could bring him to show and tell and say, hey, everybody, here's my puppy brother. Well, when you say it like that, it makes perfect sense. Yeah, it's on YouTube. Yeah. Um, we should yeah. do that. So then, uh, yeah, I was just playing solo for a little bit, and then the first show we actually played as puppy brother was... Uh, it was in Oneonta, and our friend Jade, who's in Oso Oso, mm -hmm. played bass for that, and it was like... Him, me, and Aaron playing. It was not too bad. But like since cool. then, uh, bands changed a lot. But uh, right, that's yeah, fun. Cool. That's actually something I want to get into. Sort of like that. Uh, you're you're from Long Island, right? You both Correct. are from Long Island, mm -hmm. um, Queens. And so, <laughs> all right. So <laughs> it's not really. <laughs> but like, but like, I I have noticed that like there is this really like tight knit group of people that are like constantly just hopping around from band to band. Right. Um, and I think that, I think that's so cool. Like you mentioned Jade, uh, and Aaron too, uh, who were both in Oso. So, um, and did you, did you have any connection with, uh, Quijibo? Yeah, that's, yeah. that's really funny. Uh, yeah, I'm like really close. I used to be very close friends with those kids. Um, yeah. when I first started getting into Long Island music, like in a strong way, um, you know, like a lot of my friends went away to school. I was staying on Long Island for family reasons in school. Mm -hmm. And uh, I just started going to so many shows that I actually met those kids in Quijibo, Sean okay. and Tom yeah, and Tom. Yeah. It was cool. Yeah, they're really good kids. I don't really see them very often. But, okay, uh, yeah. yeah. I, I met them recently, and, and we brought up your name. And uh, they were like, yeah, oh, yeah, we used to play with JD. You we, we, we knew him and Jade. I thought that, I just, I just thought that was so cool. Yeah, if you, you definitely, big, big plug, even though it's probably not as useful <laughs> now, but Trevi Fountain is like probably one of the coolest records you'll hear <laughs> okay. uh, from any Long Island band that doesn't do anything anymore.
<laughs> yeah, I haven't listened to, to the whole thing, but I've heard a song or two. Oh, it's it's goddamn tight. Yeah, <laughs> that's cool. Yeah, and I, I really like seeing... I, every time I talk to someone, it just seems like they know so many people from like the Long Island scene, and I think that that's so cool. I guess that's something I, don't, I haven't really talked to too many people about is like what Long Island music really is like and what differentiates it from other mm-hmm. other music out there mm-hmm. um i don't know if like you guys have an answer to that off the top of your head or you can think of it uh it depends. i think it's more of a community thing than like a like a genre thing i'd right? say it's more of like the people but also the music definitely connects to the people <laughs> yeah you know i mean yeah i mean like personally uh I wouldn't have a lot of my like really closest friends like even I probably wouldn't even know who Shauna is mm-hmm. if it wasn't for the fact that these like DIY venues here exist let alone just a community based around all these shows right. that happen so mm-hmm. frequently right mm-hmm. like first time I met Shauna was actually at a house show out over here mm-hmm. and uh, met her like through the shows and eventually just one day she just called me puppy brother and then I kind of just like I was like, yeah, I kind of need to know who you are. <laughs> yeah, oh, that's cool. Yeah, it worked out yeah, really so, well. So uh, that kind of brings me to this. So, Jana, you originally were not in Puppy Brother. So mm-hmm. maybe just, like, how did, how did that connection happen? Like, what, what made you <laughs> ask Jana to join the band? Uh, so <laughs> so I saw Big F- So I saw Jana just through shows, and I was just, like, just interested in her as a person just because I knew she played music. And I saw a big fan play, and I was just, like, really incredibly impressed by what they were doing. I really like Jean's voice a lot. And, um, oh, stop it. <laughs> and, like, one of my biggest influences for a while was uh, Tiger's Jaw, stuff like that. Yeah. I always kind of looked at myself being like, yeah, I would love to have some female vocals with mine. I feel like the harmony is really cool. So, um, when he we asked were, me to be on the record first. Yeah, so, like, we we're when we first started recording the record, I was, like, had it in the back of my head, and I was talking with Aaron and um, our bassist, Greg, who's also in Max Seal. Should have mentioned that. Mm. Uh, and we were just talking. I was like, yeah, I kind of want to have Jean on this. And they are you know, everyone is very for it, even the engineer we're working with, Billy Menino. Uh, they're all like, yeah, you know, they all knew who she was. So we are like, yeah, we should probably get her in here. And, uh, you know, it was it was a quick yes, so <laughs> cool. I was really happy about that. And then a couple weeks later, I was just like, "Yeah, I really want you to be in the band, you know, not just studio us." Okay. And uh, fortunately, it worked out. And gotcha. we're best friends now. Hey, mm. I learned the guitar parts. And, uh... <laughs> Didn't take too long. I don't write very yeah <laughs> incredibly so, difficult. Yeah, I wanna, and I want to talk about um, sort of the process of making "Leave It Where It Lays." Um, were, was there stuff recorded before that? Um, Ad gig. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, it's actually funny you say that. So when I first started playing like the solo shows and just getting the name out uh, as like a birthday present to myself, I just wanted to screw with everybody. So what I did was I wrote this very ambient intro to, um, which was just the chords to uh, Smash Mouth. Oh, All Star. I feel like All I heard Star. that. Yeah, so that was up on the internet, and I was, was like, like, yeah. like a year ago. Yeah, yeah. it was. It was. Yeah, it was like basically a little over it, and uh, I just put that up, and I was like, yeah, everybody check it out. Here's the first Puppy Brother song, <laughs> and after like about like thirty seconds, it just cuts to Aaron saying, "Yo, Neve, sh- shut the peckers." Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I heard, yeah. Yo, Neve, shut the fuck up, <laughs> and then it just goes into All Star, but the whole entire song of All Star, and I remember I was actually one of the first. I, yeah, I messaged him on Facebook, and I was like, "Do you know that this is happening on this uh, on no. your Bandcamp link?" <laughs> no, I'm not. Because I restarted it like three times just to make sure that I was hearing correctly. Is that was... is that still up there? Can I find it? Uh, it's private on Bandcamp because I was worried that I was going to get copyright yeah. problems. But yeah. at the same point, like. What's not punk about copyright infringement? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so I want to try. I want to try to find. That. I want to try to get that and put that in the episode. That'd be yeah, cool. yeah, of course. Um, okay, cool. So I want to talk about yeah the process of making "Leave It Where It Lays." Uh, which when did that come out again? Uh, so the record, it's the, the EP came out on July seventh this last summer. Right. Um, we recorded at Voodoo Studios, which is out in Port Jeff on Long Island. Um, a lot of cool records came out of there. Um, a lot of our friends' records have also been like worked on there. The uh, Deer Hunter recorded a oh, record right. there. Yeah, that's one of Jean's favorite bands. So mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. her coming there was definitely a big. We didn't even. No, but I was. Yeah. I, I have been there, which was cool because the Deer Hunter's record posters like hanging on the wall. So oh. I was really hyped. Yeah, that, about that must have been a great experience. It was cool. Yeah, it was cool to see that. Um, there's also a really really cute cat that's over there. What's its name again? Why don't it's like an 
I feel like another animal's name. I don't remember. <laughs> Whatever. That's irrelevant. I don't know. It's Shut weird. up, John. It's a really cute cat. That, yeah. I'm allergic to cats, but I love cats. Oh, so man. It's fun. You're allergic to cats? What about a uh, sandwich? <laughs> sandwich. Uh, sandwich is... He just takes a Zyrtec and he's fine. Sandwich is Jana's cat. That's my cat. Oh, he's adorable. Cat. She, <laughs> she is adorable. Yeah. It's okay. She doesn't know <laughs> what her <laughs> She can't even is. read. <laughs> Anyway, um, but yeah, so we recorded out there. Um, originally, we were trying to do a full length because, um, you know, I've been playing music for a lot of years. And I have a lot of songs on, like, the back burner, but we were just like, let's just get something out. And, uh, you know, putting a, re- a record together is pretty expensive. So uh, we were like, you know, let's do an EP, see how it goes, and we'll work from there. Cool. So um, we took a song from my old project, Little World, and then some newer songs I've been writing over the last couple of years. I felt like cohesively work together with the storyline on the record right. and uh yeah you know um we went in a couple months earlier so Aaron could do some drums because he was at the time of the record being recorded when I was in there um Aaron was on tour with Oso and then um ironically at the same point Greg was on tour with Max Seal when I was there so I think <laughs> right. Greg spent like only two of the four days days there or so so uh but yeah it was nice you know I sat down with Billy Billy's like incredible what he does I owe that kid a lot mm-hmm. so really appreciate working with him awesome so you, you mentioned that uh like circle tree had been written like a while ago right yeah circle tree was on um the little world record uh on the sidelines it's still online um definitely doesn't sound as good as yeah. uh what we did at voodoo okay um but yeah like a lot of those songs still mean a lot to me and a lot of them are actually going to be eventually like rewritten into puppy brother songs like one of the songs of that record um uh, is actually going to be like one of the newer songs we're going to be putting out on something hopefully in the future cool um so like were the rest of the songs were those like songs you had written a while ago that again like you had on the back burner for a while kind of yeah uh so like the single we put out kokeshi keshi that song is from uh, that was when i was like doing homeschool which is like 2014 2015 or so and uh, I was just playing a lot of solo shows with that and like that song just always stuck out to me a lot i really like enjoyed playing it a lot um but even uh, songs like Hissy Fit, that song was literally written, I want to say, like, not even a month before we even recorded the record. Okay. Like, we played it at a show, like, one time, and then we recorded the record with it. Gotcha. Yeah. But uh, that's also, like, another one of my favorite songs. Great. <laughs> yeah, so I, I, I want to go into um, a little bit of... You guys both write music, and, and uh, I kind of want to go into... I dabble. What? I dabble. You dabble? I dabble. In writing music. He's, he's more of a writer than I am. Well, well, for this question, <laughs> I guess applies to both of you. But I just want to hear like some of your your biggest influences on maybe your your lyric style or the you know the way you write the actual music itself, um, because it's easy to just say like, oh, they're you know these guys are a punk band, but you guys do a very specific sound, and, and I just, I'm just wondering like what influences you guys have. Um, I really so like one of my biggest influences was like really rooted a lot of it's rooted to like Rivers Cuomo from Weezer he's like I think that man writes some of like the most incredible like music in general like even now like his like music so poppy but I can't not like it so I haven't fun. listened to Pacific Daydream yet. oh it's a really it's, I have Weekend Woman so stuck in my head currently right at this song <laughs> yeah it's tight but uh he he was originally one of my biggest influences now more or less um like when we were recording Leave It Where It Lays um, and like just when I was writing all that stuff prior, um, I over the last couple of years, I've become very into Weatherbox. That's like one oh, of my okay. favorite bands right now. Uh, I hear a lot a of people bringing up Weatherbox. Oh, recently. it's incredible. I don't, know, I don't know what it is, but yeah, I mean, I, they are great. I, that, yeah. I, that's what it is, but yeah. It's the lyrics, man. Yeah, Weather, yeah. that dude just... What's I the lead singer? Brian something. Brian, Brian, Warren. Warren. Brian Warren. He's yeah. incredible. Yeah, um, yeah he... I, I always like to tell people that... Uh, there's this other band called Mansions, and the two of them mm-hmm. actually did a split together. It was called Manbox, and like that was just very important to me, like hearing yeah. that. And uh, I don't know, just the two of those bands together. It's kind of like one of them's like the good side and the evil side of my the way I think. Sort of. Okay. It's really easy to connect with those two bands. Right. So uh, I like using them for reference and just trying to find ways to explain my own personal feelings, but not explaining it so blatantly. Cool. Uh, I remember I was like reading an interview that the. Chris from Mansions put out and he was saying like yeah I don't really like explaining my what my songs are about I'd rather just let the listener come up with their own storyline for it and uh, I like taking that and masking what I'm talking about in my songs like uh, I like when my songs are so confusing that the person doesn't know what I'm talking about a little bit 
just so that like they can you know come up with whatever they want for it. It's like you know if it relates to you, that's great. That's all I really care awesome. about. I just want you to feel comfortable. <laughs> cool. <laughs> uh, I don't know when it comes to I I haven't written anything personally for Puppy Brother, but when it comes to my style of writing music. I'm very influenced by um, like pedal. Okay. I don't know. I'm very influenced by pedal. Um, I'd say lyrically, I'm pretty influenced by Julian Baker mm-hmm. because oh, I'm man. mostly writing about Can like you turn out the lights. Really? Oh mm-hmm. man, oh, what a great good. <laughs> Yeah, it's good. Um, I don't know. I'm usually writing about like sad stuff. You know, it's just really generic, and I don't really like putting my music out there. Oh, that I've written. It's, not it's also hard for me to finish songs. <laughs> oh yeah, same here. I guess uh, maybe that's a good question. Well, maybe Jana, you're not the best one to answer this. It's you have a hard time finishing songs, but um, maybe JD. Like, if you had to give some advice to people who are gonna, who are, you know, getting interested in songwriting and actually making music, uh, what would you say are like the proper steps to to be fo- to follow? I guess. And, and I'm saying this, like, for the audience, but also, like, for myself, because I've, like, just recently started writing a lot of music. Oh, hell um, yeah. Writing a lot of lyrics and stuff. Uh, but I, like, I just, I don't know what I'm doing at all, so. Um, so, personally, like, I really like just, um, I like writing honest music. Um, what I do when it comes to lyrics, I will literally just think of random stuff in my head and I'll just, I have like 40 notes on my phone uh, for each song practically that I could be working on. I'm like, oh, that's a cool little lick or like a line I can write into it. Um, you know, even like every single time like Jean and I are at like a show or something, just like watching a band, I'm like, oh, that's like clever. Like, I I wish I could do some wordplay like that and Mm -hmm. I'll like think some stuff from there. Um, and then even like when it comes to just like even just writing instrumentals, like, um, Sometimes I'll just, like, for fun, just teach myself a cover, and I'm like, oh, that's a cool chord. I'm like, but what would it be cool if I used it with this instead? So I'll just, like, play around with just, like, 40 different songs and, you know, make a puppy bug song out of it. Right. You know, uh, there's this really funny article I remember a, year, a couple years ago that came out of, um, I think it was when Never Hung Over Again came out, the Joyce Manor record. And Barry Johnson was just like, all right, here's a list of all the songs that ripped off to make this record. <laughs> and I thought that was just the funniest thing. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, a really famous musician's doing that. I guess I'm not doing the wrong thing. <laughs> yeah, right? Okay, yeah. I, I feel like that's a problem that a lot of new songwriters or just musicians have is they feel like they're using too much of their influence. And I feel like that's mm-hmm. a thing for, like, anyone in the arts who, like, has that idea that they have to, I guess, uh, be, be a symbol original. for originality yeah. and not let influence shine through at all. But I think it's really important for influence. To yeah, but influence through. always, it can spark originality. Yeah. Thank yeah, you. exactly. Yeah, it can get dangerous, though. I mean, like, there's a lot of times, like, I'll listen to a band, and I'm like, yeah, we get it. Like, you like Brand New or, yeah. like, something like that. Right. And it's just, like, I get a little bored of it. It's like, yo, I want, I'm listening to this record because yeah. I want to hear what you're doing different with music. Exactly, mm-hmm. yeah. I, I do hear a lot of bands where I cannot differentiate them from yeah. another band, you know. Um, and, yeah, at that, at that point, it's a bit upsetting. So, okay, I want to go into um, talking about the actual recording process of Leave It Where It Lays. Cool. Um, and what it was what it was like so like i want to start with how did how did, did the songs change at all when you went into the recording when, when you went into record them yeah um, um they changed like a little bit here or there um i mean r- whenever i write songs they usually start off acoustic i'm never i'm not really like a huge like gearhead or anything um i barely even know how to use my actual amp <laughs> sometimes <laughs> uh so, or your tuning pedal. <laughs> or my tuning. I, no, I know how to use the tuning pedal now. Now you do. <laughs> yeah, that shit's sick. <laughs> you definitely stay in tune with the tuning pedal. Um, but personally, uh, yeah, most of my songs start off acoustic, and then eventually um, most of the Puppy Brothers songs, like, I'll sit down with Aaron, we'll make them in the full band, and then, like, when we got to the studio, um, you know, we recorded the drums, like, a month before we even got to sit down and do guitars and stuff like that, or bass and vocals. So... Um, you know, Billy, like, really worked really, like, strong, like, you know, slow with me, being like, okay, yeah, like, we could do this, we could do that. Um, I remember there was just a lot of, like, even vocal changes that we did where we just, like, completely dropped parts of it, like, little um, just sing along parts that uh, didn't really work as well when we were recording them. We we're like, yeah, we just can't get this right. Um, I did a lot more yelling than I was planning on doing. <laughs> really? Yeah, like, I really channeled, like, some, like, title fight shit going on. <laughs> I was just like, oh, yeah, what title fight record does Neve, like, definitely shed with his yelling? Definitely not Hyperview. <laughs> definitely not Hyperview. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, I mean, like, I was going to go into there, like, singing a lot, but a lot of that record is just me getting a lot of anger out. 
um, Leave It Where It Lays is kind of just me expressing, uh, like, putting, like, a chapter in my life behind me mm -hmm. um, and just going past it completely. So, right. like, it was kind of just me, like, all right, let's get this completely out of here. And, like, to be honest with you, I think the future of Puppy Brothers is going to be, like, still very punk, but, like, <laughs> a little bit like, calmer, maybe, mm -hmm. a lot more singing. Okay. Um, but, uh, I don't know, like, I still like singing, like, the Puppy Brothers songs a little bit quieter. Like, uh, whenever Jean and I do, like, acoustic shows. Right they're kind of back to what they used to be, but uh, yep. the full length is, you know, the EP is still <laughs> mm -hmm. something I'm comfortable with. <laughs> right. Jana, what was your experience like in the in the studio recording? Well, I just went in for one day and did my vocals. Mm -hmm. uh, it was a lot of fun. It was my first time in a studio environment actually recording my own vocals. And so when you're hearing it back, you're just listening to the music. So you don't hear your voice over the music when it's played back, and that made me so uncomfortable because mm -hmm. it was just my vocals. Oh, that's my voice sound. Yeah, like it, was, it was like that. Um, but it was a lot of fun, and uh, I was able to do a lot more with my voice than I was even expecting. Um, like, there's a part in Hissy Fit where JD and I do a really, really cool harmony, mm -hmm. and I hit a note that I didn't think I was going to be able to, but Billy was like, oh, like, you could do it. Just push through. You yeah, got it. You got it. Spot. Yeah. <laughs> Billy's the greatest person in the It was record. awesome, and I did I it. I love that kid so much. It was a lot of fun. I can't wait to get back in the studio and do more. Yeah. I guess that leads into the next part, which is, uh, I, I guess maybe it's, it's a little hard to tell right now, but, like, what the future of Puppy Brother holds, but I guess... <laughs> What would you guys want out of the future of Puppy Brother? Uh, so I just got another full-time job, which, like, really fucking sucks. <laughs> uh, but, you know, benefits are really chill. Yeah. <laughs> I like being able to go to the dentist if I have to. That's true. Um, you know. <laughs> but um, so, like, we've been, we've, we're, we've been really slacking recently with recording. We're trying to put out um, a split between both of our projects, Big Fan and Puppy Brother. Hopefully that'll be out soon. We're tr aiming for. <laughs> Supposed to be out on Halloween, and we oh. haven't even recorded once. <laughs> Halloween next year. Yeah, that. that's what we meant. <laughs> um, but yeah, we're trying to put out a split because we do have a couple new songs for Puppy Brother. Um, we're gonna be playing like some of them at acoustic shows coming up. Um, but recently, over the last two months since I quit my last job, uh, I have been trying to write this new uh, full length that I want to be putting out soon. Uh, well, within like the next year or so. Um, I don't really like putting out EPs. Like I was kind of like discouraged by it because I feel like when everyone's at the end of the year is like, oh, what were your favorite records this year? And then there's like that little tiny list like, oh, yeah. but here are my favorite EPs. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, you know, EPs are still goddamn great, you know. But, uh, yeah, I really want to put out a full length that's like really cohesive and like sticks to his storyline and stuff like that, which is like taking a lot more process of thinking than the last record right. did. Right. So. And, and Jana, you... Um are you, like, more involved? And now that you're, like, more involved in the band, are you, like, mm -hmm. more involved in the pre-production aspect of that as well? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, we're constantly, like, bouncing ideas off of each other. Well, him mostly bouncing ideas off of me and showing me things that he's been writing, um, which is a lot of fun. Sometimes I feel bad giving my opinion. We get into a lot of fights, but, like, yeah. they're resolved very quickly <laughs> with, like, intoxication, <laughs> for lack of better... Uh, words that was a, that's a stupid <laughs> it's weed <laughs> uh, <laughs> i have a job now <laughs> sorry oh no it's the zoomies <laughs> oh zoomies you went from pax on to zoomies yeah i feel like i i said that in a way that was kind of like oh that's a little bit of a downgrade in my opinion no but <laughs> it's whatever they sell weed socks too i think <laughs> actually we i don't think they i feel like they would i haven't seen them yet I don't think socks? they do. Maybe Paxson just does No, I it. think Zoomies definitely does, because I'm pretty sure that's I where I bought Paxson? my pair of Paxson weed leaf does, socks yeah. really? in, like, 2011. Yeah, whatever. I don't know. We smoke weed, mom. <laughs> 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 you know, my mom uh, knows. Wait, what's your mom's name? Uh, Young Doran. <laughs> yeah, she. Uh, I think she just liked the, the podcast on, on Facebook. Oh, hell yeah. I told so, yeah, I told her. That's so <laughs> funny. Uh, dude, I love my mom. I was yeah. just with her before. She she's was a crying. good mom. She was crying earlier because I was talking about like hanging out with Jana. She was like, oh, she's such a good girl. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, I got to meet your mom at some point. Oh, she'll be hopefully at a show soon. I was trying I to feel, do... Wait, was your mom at the last show? Mm. My mom doesn't really come to shows very often because she's like, oh, supporting my son. <laughs> no, I'm just <laughs> <laughs> My mom will be at the at Yeah, I've met your mom show. like a million times. No, my, mom, uh, my mom's like a stay-at-home at kind of mom because she uh, watches over my grandpa and stuff like that. Gotcha. So she, uh, you know, I support her 
doing that a lot more, so I understand. Gotcha. But, uh, well, I hope to meet her someday. Oh, you will. You will. Good. Good. Come over for dinner. She makes, <laughs> she makes great chicken, amongst other things. Good. We're Keep trying to start a dream pop project. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Just what, you me. and my mom? Is no, it? no. <laughs> yeah, me, me and Doran. No, uh, Neve and I are trying to start a dream pop project. Yeah, in, in like, the vein of what? Like, like, like always. Okay. Really, like, always and porches and stuff like porches, that. Yeah. 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 Also, my other band just played a gig the other day with this band called Pearl Sugar. Yeah, they're so good. That cool. was so good. Yeah, they're, like, chill wave dream pop-ish. And, yeah. uh, cool. Really Every time you guys like talented. name drop a band, I I usually like stick in a little like sound bite of like cool. a piece of their music, so I'll, I'll I'll put them in there. The song "Lock You Up." Lock they you only up. have two songs it. on Spotify right now, but okay. damn, it's are they up. good? You hit some really notes. hot notes. Yeah. Yeah, I don't Spicy. know. Spicy. I was like when we were going to that show, I was not knowing what to expect. John was like, "Yeah, they're like chill wave and this and that, blah blah." And I'm like, "All right, cool." And then we get there, and as soon as we go downstairs, like, between sets, there's, like, a keyboard out and drum machine. I was like, ooh. <laughs> Some <laughs> hot, like, we really hot are beats going Brooklyn, on. Aren't we? <laughs> it was a Bushwick cool. show. Oh, that was in Bushwick. Yeah. Oh, I wanted to go to that. It was fun. It was it in was a really basement. Fun. It was there's cool. a really rude cat named Captain Crunch. <laughs> which they totally missed the opportunity to name that cat Captain Crunch, <laughs> which is so dumb to me that they didn't. Settlers of Catan. Catan. <laughs> you can't still spell <laughs> Yeah. Uh, so how do you how do you guys feel about like the the DIY scene? It's very back and it's forth. A loaded you, question. <laughs> yeah, I guess I guess what, what I mean to say is like uh, that's exactly what I mean to say. Um, how do you guys feel about it? So like if DIY if like Long Island's DIY like perspective didn't exist, I really wouldn't have met a lot of people who I'm very close friends with now. Yeah. Um, you know, a couple of years ago, there was this venue around the block called, uh, well, venue. It was like a house venue called Dong Island, mm -hmm. where I met, like, so many people I'm really close with. And Didn't meet me somehow. Yeah, like, yeah. it's funny Amazing. because one of my really close friends who's in, uh, this kid who's in Little World with us, Joby, he was a photographer who used to come with me to stuff. And there's, like, photos with Jana in the background. In, like, Whoa. 2014. Yeah, and, like, somehow we just never met. That's it was so insane. Cool. It's not um, weird. But, yeah, like, without, like, the DIY venues here, like, I wouldn't have met so many people I'm really close with and like the best part about it too is like um there's this one that's around the block that's uh called High Hopes now mm -hmm. some uh, other people are running it um they for like the last year have been just doing like open mics and those open mics have just been such a progressive way to like work on things mm -hmm. like everybody who would go to those always has really nice things to say about whatever you're working on. You know, yeah. like, you could do your dance, you could do comedy. It's a positive environment. It's such a positive, safe space that yeah. just, like, you just feel really comfortable. And, like, when I was writing, every time I'd write a new Puppy Brother song, and, like, most of them were just songs that, you know, went to leave it where it lays. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I'd play them there, and, like, people would be like, yo, that was, like, really good, this and that. And that positive influence, like, really led me, like, you know what, it, it's totally worth, you know, recording a record right mm -hmm. and it do you just th feels do you great. think there's a lot of like misconceptions about diy and diy um, community because the way the way that you're you know the way you're describing it is very community based and very positive the problem lies sorry to cut you off yeah Josh. No, please do the problem lies uh where it gets clicky okay and kind of um exclusive mm -hmm. in a way do you know what i mean yeah. Neve? I, don't know. I, I, know, I think I'm, I know what you mean. I think it's like it's a DIY is like super super important um, because it gives you know people like us a way to make music without signing our souls away mm -hmm. immediately. Yeah, but I don't know. Yeah, I mean, like a lot of people think that like the way you have to like run shows is like all right, let's just throw as many bands as possible onto this. Yeah, it's like a no a reentry venue, and it's just like six hours like i understand the concept of business with that where it's like all right you really got it you know the venue costs this much money it's not like it's a person's basement that you don't have to pay anything for yeah, you gotta make, you gotta the, make money the money back. for it to pay it back so that the bands could even make something mm -hmm. but at the same point like i personally don't want to play a show that's like seven bands it's scary yeah like Too that many. stuff's like, ter like terrifying honestly because <laughs> it's like you know like i obviously had to stand there and like try to sell shirts or something like that you know to support myself mm -hmm. and like the band but at the same point uh I don't really want to play anything that's like more than four bands. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. I'm I'm 25. Like yeah. I got a job in the morning. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna be tired. But I don't know. Like a lot of people do think like you have to run shows that way, mm -hmm. and it's just like no. Let's just make it like a cool, relaxed environment. Punk times kind of fun where it's just like oh yeah, you know, like the band will be on sometime around here, and then you get there and like the first band's not even on yet <laughs> yeah. for another half hour. Like right. that that stuff can be bad, but 
I don't know. I, I I would rather go to a show in a basement with like an okay sound than go to a show that's like overly packed and hot and crowded and like I have to like think about smoking a cigarette that I don't even want to smoke just to like spend some time away from a band I'm not even trying to watch. Right. <laughs> as terrible as that probably sounds. No, that I mean that's it's the truth. So that's yeah. It's just like I don't know. Like I don't want to be at a show for seven hours. <laughs> you know, I don't think that's no. necessary. I've I'd rather be spending time doing something more positive, like playing with sandwich. My cat. <laughs> that's my cat again. Just sandwich. Sandwich. <laughs> yeah. Not he's not just playing with a sandwich. <laughs> I work at some <laughs> <laughs> quiz knows. <laughs> Quizies. <laughs> um, so okay, another topic that I, I generally like to bring up when people come in here is sort of this. Because, well, actually, you guys are the, like the second person I've had, second person collectively that Ooh. I've had in uh, the studio. The first one I had in here was Casey Bowles, which was, he was a great guy, great interview. Oh, yeah. um, and the one thing I brought up with him that I, I want to bring up with you guys is just like sort of the struggle of balancing being a musician along with having like a professional life. Like you said, you're working at Zoomies. Um, Jana, I don't know what you do. Besides <laughs> nothing. Okay. <laughs> well, yeah. So, so balancing that sort of like professional life with the music life, because I, the one thing I found so much uh, uh, with like any of the bands that I listen to or any of the musicians that I meet, even even like some of the bigger name ones um, that I meet, and I still like, like when I met uh, Bo Brines, Bo yeah, Bo Brines from Broken Beak. Mm -hmm. um, I, I love I love I was listening to Broken Beats record uh, the one before Sumner or maybe it was Sumner um, I'd been listening to that record for a while and then I met him at what's now called High Hopes mm -hmm. um, and it was just like shocking to me to see that like someone whose music I love so much and was like uh, like just so influenced by and I just I thought he had a great sound he was like asking for gas money at the end of the show oh, and yeah. it's just it's just like immediately like it just clicked with me I was like oh it's like still a real struggle like you can make beautiful music you can make great music but like you're not going to be making great money with mm -hmm. it um so I guess I want to talk to both of you about like does that ever like turn you off from making music I mean obviously it hasn't up to this point but does it ever cross your mind that maybe this is something we can't do forever no no not at all like no. honestly like like, I don't play music to, like... It's not for the money. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. not about the money, like, or making it... Like, yeah, I would, like, love, like... It'd be dope to be, like, on, uh, you know, Conan O'Brien or something right. like that. Like, playing music, like, that would be super, super sick, but... Uh, it's just not the reality most of the time. I play music because it's my vice, yeah. you know? Uh, it's not... It's your vice. That's not a good thing. A vice is a bad thing. Is it, though? Yeah. I don't know. Music makes me comfortable. Like, and, uh, you know, expressing yeah, myself... Yeah, vices make you comfortable, I guess. Yeah, yeah I don't yeah. know. Like, uh... There, there's a difference between me doing like like crazy drugs or like you know doing some terrible stuff you know I could be doing that but instead I like put my effort from being wherever I am in my head into like writing a song to make myself more comfortable mm -hmm. um I mean like yeah like it is really hard to you know write music or do stuff when you're playing you know when you're working like uh, I remember when I was working at PAX and there'd be so many I would honestly just record audio memos on my phone of just like random riffs and stuff and I would listen to that same minute and a half riff my whole entire 30 minute drive to work and then I'd be listening to it on the speakers at my store when no one's coming in mm -hmm. like trying to write a song and it would take me forever to do that and I'd finally get home and like get like a little bit farther with it and it would take like a really long time and it would get really annoying because I'm just like oh I just want to sit down and play guitar but I have to work mm. but you know at the same point uh I think leave it where it lays sounds kind of cool because you know we put so much effort into like going to a good studio to like record what deserves to be recorded <laughs> it makes it a little bit better I mean yeah it's frustrating but um you gotta like work or else you're yeah. not gonna yeah, you, get you want. really are like running your own business exactly mm -hmm. yeah. yeah yeah and and so yeah does that ever get stressful I'm assuming it I'm assuming it would yeah, I own people money. Yeah. <laughs> I owe my stepdad some money, but uh, you know he's a uh, he's my stepdad. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, uh, he's he a good guy. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I mean, like, uh, it's definitely stressful. Like, if it was up to me, I would. Like, I remember we we finished recording back in kind of in like a April or so, yeah. but then we spent like the next couple months working on the record and like there's like mm -hmm. weeks where it's like oh billy can't record there's a week where john uh, john can't record aaron's not here greg's not here i'm not around because i have to work and yeah. it was like Scheduling super stressful because all i wanted to ass. do yeah all, all i wanted to do is just finish the record mm -hmm. and it 
took longer. And then it even got to the point where like we're like trying to send out singles and stuff like that or just songs and like, hey, can you like feature us? And people weren't getting back to us. And I'm just like, honestly, I just want to put this out. And like eventually got to that point. And I really wish I could have had someone to stream it and stuff like that. But at the same point, I'm just like happy yeah. I can put something out in general. Yeah. Jana, do you want to say anything about the balancing music with a professional life? Um, well, yeah, I mean, I'm applying to grad school right now. So uh, if I get in, fingers crossed, that's going to be like two years of intense coursework for me. So that worries me <clears throat> when it comes to um, like my life involving music. But um, I know that it's always going to be something that I want to do and that I'm going to do and I'm going to make time for because um, I really have a lot of fun doing it. And uh, I'd say definitely, like, just the prospect of how fun it is for me Mm -hmm. and how much I enjoy it outweighs the fact that it's definitely going to be a... It's going to cause stressful situations. Um, But, yeah, you know, you got to find the balance. Right. Okay, so I want to talk to I want to talk a little bit about um, some more future of writing of Puppy Brother because you mentioned earlier that um, the Leave It Where It Lays was like you getting a lot of anger out, mm-hmm. and you d- you did also mention that in the future you're probably gonna tone that down a little bit. Um, so it, I guess when you're whenever you're writing new songs, it's it's a reflection of however you're feeling at that moment in time. Mm-hmm. Um, so since writing Leave It Where It Lays or many of the songs off Leave It Where It Lays, like is is that a sign that like things are becoming more positive in in your life? Uh, yeah, a little bit. Um, a lot of what the new record is going to be about has to do with just like understanding myself. Mm-hmm. Um, I've realized, um, like uh, we have this new song we've been playing that's called "Bad Trip." I think it's what we're going to oh, call I it. Oh, remember that one? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and uh, that song in particular is just about like uh, kind of rooted to like. Uh, just like a big like uh, heavy weight being pushed on me by other people Mm -hmm. and like um, the rest of the record from that point like that's going to be like an earlier song on the record probably but from there on it's going to go on to just like understanding the concepts of like what I have to do for myself to make myself who I want to be I guess I don't know Uh, you know like I can't say like things are bad right now I'm pretty happy in my life right now Um, uh, and I was happy when Leave It Where It is coming out and stuff like that and when I was writing it um, but uh, yeah, things things are chill. I guess <laughs> that's the best way to put it. Yeah, I, well, I guess I guess maybe like a, another another part of that question is just that, and this is more of a general question in in songwriting in general. But like, is there ever a pressure to sort of write a song that you know will be popular? Uh, you know, yeah. it's funny you say <laughs> that. <laughs> um, so like, there's a lot of time. So like, I used to have this very funny outlook when I was in uh, my earlier bands, where I was just like, all right, uh, it's 2013. I want to write a song that's gonna be my lyrics for the chorus are gonna be on top of a GIF on Tumblr. <laughs> that was like oh my. Oh my god. <laughs> That, that was like me, my that makes me want to leave oh. this room and this building and even this country. <laughs> <laughs> no, not even. No, because like I don't know. Um, I just I, I like my whole thing is I just like writing like a catchy hook like that's like what happens from you. Listen and he to, does. <laughs> that's from listening to a lot of Weezer. Weezer. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I don't know. Like I, I write my songs just to for myself. Like uh, I think Tyler the Creator said it really well. He's like, I don't really care who the fuck's listening to my music. <laughs> like I'm writing the songs I want to hear, and like that's how I am. Like. <laughs> me, me and Shauna have this joke where like she'll be like oh you want to listen to our record for like a second <laughs> like she'll just put it on and I'm like yo don't play it on my Spotify I don't want <laughs> people to see that I'm listening to my own songs <laughs> but at the same time I'm not going to say my own music isn't cool to me like I love my songs and I'm happy that they sound cool you know that's good <laughs> that's good Jana what about you like when like when you're writing a song is that consciously in your mind like are people going to be singing along to this or are you more focused on the fact that it's personal to you? I think I'm more focused on the fact that it's personal to me. Also, when I'm writing a song, recently I've been more focused on the fact uh, that I'm like, I'm ripping off Julian Baker <laughs> and I have to stop doing this right now. Yeah. <laughs> so that's, yeah, that's what I'm mostly focused on. Does that happen a lot? Do you, do you find that, like when either of you are like writing something, you're like, oh shit, I'm, I'm totally ripping yeah. this. Oh, every single oh, time. Yeah. Every yeah. single time. There's this, uh, <laughs> like literally when we were writing, when I was writing Bad Trip before I even showed it to Jana, uh, I was like, oh, crap, this sounds like the Malcolm in the Middle themes. 
<laughs> which is like, a good ass song. It was a good yeah. song, yeah. <laughs> I would say 90% of my songs start off somehow sounding like Malcolm, Malcolm in the Middle. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> At least uh, it's not the Friends theme song. Yeah, right? Yeah. Uh, I'm not trying to alienate your audience yeah, right now. Yeah. I, I wish my songs sounded more like the Seinfeld Friends theme Friends is not a good show. <laughs> that's just like... That's funky. Yeah. yeah. Wait, is, is there going to be some <laughs> disco on the next <laughs> on the next? Oh, there should be. That would be tight. I want to get some like emo you, horns on there. Do you, do, you no. a, do, you Vol- do you listen to Wolfpack? Wolfpack? Uh, yeah, I've actually heard this track Wait, or two. Wait, we just... Yeah, we were just we listening just to them the other day. Them, like, they, yeah, they just released an album yesterday, actually. Oh, sick. Cool. Um, I know what we're listening to later. Something. Mm. I forget what it's called. Our own record. You should check out Wolfpack, though. They're 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 groovy. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Not really disco-y, I guess, but still, they're funky. There's this one band that one of my friends, uh, my friend Taylor, who's in this band, Fool Heavy, they actually just put out a record, too. That's really cool. Mm -hmm. Um, He showed me this band. uh, I think they're called The Virgins. And he told me the background story. He's like, yeah, it's like a bunch of models that were just like, yo, let's just make a band. And they're like, this is really cool, like, sexy rock band. How I'm trying to be. (laughs) Yeah, and, like, I was just so into it. And, like, I, I always, like, think about that band as just... Me and him in the back of a pack sun, like doing stock, and he's just like dancing and like doing disco moves, and like, oh, that's that's a high record. I don't know why I'm talking about that. But <laughs> I'm just thinking about disco stuff. That's fine. Yeah, no, yeah. keep thinking about disco. I want to hear disco on the next. Oh, uh, dude, it's gonna happen. I mean, Let's honestly, just make one track, like just a straight up disco track. We just cover and September then never mention it by again. Earth, Wind, and Fire. Oh, I want to cover September by Earth, Wind, and Fire Ooh. so bad. Like, like a punk cover or just like a legit? Ooh. A little bit of both. I mean, honestly, like I think one of the coolest things. Oh, we were watching it the other day, even. Um, um, so like we're seeing Joyce Manor tomorrow. Yes. Yeah, we're seeing Joyce Manor tomorrow. Joyce Manor is one of my favorite bands. Yeah. Me too. But they on their second record they covered uh, "Video Killed the Radio Star," mm-hmm. and like that shit sounds so cool to me. And I'm just like, oh, I would love to do like a cover of like an Earth Wind and Fire song, like a mm. BG song like that. That'd mm-hmm. be really cool. Yeah. I don't know. My mom just really shoved disco down my throat, and like she didn't really shove it. it was she more literally like a took a disco slide. ball and. <laughs> <laughs> Pushed it into his mouth <laughs> until he swallowed it. Yo, but I'm not hateful on it. I love <laughs> disco. <laughs> so, the other day we were like, uh, we were trying to find something on Spotify to listen to, and I found like a KTU mm. yeah, uh, Spotify I'm... playlist. Uh. Oh, you know what's also really what's that one? All right, there's this video of the Sidekicks playing Jeff Rosen. It's not even like it's disco, but it's a, it's the Sidekicks playing at Jeff Rosenstock's wedding, and they're covering Material Girl. Ooh, oh, so dude. hot. That shit's so hot to you. I don't know. I just really like it when bands cover like songs from like anything like 70s or 80s. Yeah, like, exactly. oh, Tiger's Jaws cover of Gypsy? Oh, that's yeah. really cool. That's like one of the greatest covers. Have you heard that before? I time. feel like I heard it, but I don't remember. They oh, put like a man. seven-ish with it. and like it's so good. Yeah, I just love it when bands cover like really old. Like, it's terrible for me to even say that because I was like born in like 92. But at the same point, like anything prior to me being born, I would love to hear a cover of from any band. Yeah. Like, uh, there's like that weird like little area where people are like, oh, don't cover a band that's still like active and playing stuff. You like, say yeah, that. Yeah. You say that. I mean, <laughs> yeah, I do. <laughs> but that's just because like that's what everyone tells me. I don't know. Be your own person. Right? I am my own person, and I yeah. really like Earth, Wind, like, and Fire. Like we have enough covers. <laughs> we have enough covers of Mr. Brightside. So like, yeah, we, exactly. Oh cover something else for once. Yeah. Um, yeah, I want to. I want to cover when I do have a band eventually. Yeah. I want to cover. Um, you mentioned the Bee Gees. I want to cover uh i started a joke by the bgs nice mm-hmm. but like do like a do like a fast punk cover hell yeah i'd like that that'd be really dope don't, no one steal sure. my idea don't steal my idea oh. we won't <laughs> <laughs> um cool i i, I do, are there any like set in stone plans for puppy brother um in the future we have an acoustic show coming up on sunday <laughs> yeah that's a set in stone plan yeah <laughs> yeah we got like, some acoustic shows coming up i mean um it's kind of difficult for us to really do many things since um our drummer and bassist greg and aaron are uh also in other bands, so they're a little bit busier than we are. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's a little hard for us to do that. Like, I would love to go on tour and do things like that, but yeah. I do understand the concept of needing money and benefits yeah. for yeah. my life. So so no no full U.S. tour just yet? Oh, I wish. Uh, <laughs> That'd be really cool. Maybe. Soon. Maybe. Soon, hopefully. Um, um, but yeah. you guys are working on that split with Big Fan. Yep, right? split yeah. and just writing some new songs so we can put another piece of content out. Like... Uh, that interview I was talking about earlier with the guy from Mansions, he, he even says, like, yeah, like, we're probably not going to tour much, but, like, I just like putting out content. And I was just like, yeah, it's, like, kind of, like, how I look at stuff. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm fine with playing Long Island shows, okay. like, once or twice uh, every couple months. Right. You know? But mm-hmm. uh, tour would be dope. 
<laughs> Speaking of mansions, did you hear their new? Yeah. Is, it, is, it, is it an EP or is Good. it a it's an full EP. record? It's an EP. Six songs. But that uh, mansions is like so. I, I, this, I listened to like a song or two off of it. I didn't hear the whole thing. But. Second song the second is like song, the like it's, it's just like so every mansion song put together yeah. kind of for me. It's so uh, uh, tight. <laughs> <laughs> All right, cool. That'll go into my my pretty much last question, um, mm-hmm. which I, I, I mentioned to Jana. I was going to throw this at you, so I hope she I did. She him. did. She warn you. Him. I'm one to catch. Okay, cool. So I'll start. I'll start off with Jana. Um, what do you recommend that the listeners listen to? Um, I'm super excited about the new Pine Grove mm-hmm. record. That uh, new single that's out, Intrepid, is so good. Yeah. Um, I hate th- we have to wait till March. I know. Right? I know. Yeah. yeah so and I forgot away. to get my tickets oh, to true. see them this year. So, but I, I'm kind of hyped that the next time I'm gonna see them is after uh, the next LP is out, mm. which is cool. Um, what else have I been listening to? The new Movements record is really good. Also tight. Yeah. I've been listening to that. JD, I gotta <coughs> warn you that you can't double dip. You, you can't take anything. I that promise you said. I won't. I already. Yeah, I need. I got my AOT wise on my phone since January. Oh, okay. Good. Can I look through my Spotify really quickly? Yeah, please do. I'm gonna keep talking while I do that. Cool. Also, nothing's loading, so. Uh, keep talking. Oh my god, I you don't even know what to say, say anymore. Anything. Talk about so um, much. She's a good cat. <sighs> Such a good. What? Uh, I mean, okay. I'm always like, we. I big fan also played with. Um, this band called Namesake. Pearl Sugar and Namesake are both from Connecticut and they're currently on tour and uh, we were opening for them the other day. But Namesake is also really fucking cool. Um, Peter from Namesake, their, their style of music is, it kind of reminds me of, uh, um, I don't know, do you know Jody? Do you know who Jody is? Yeah, maybe. I Nick know the Levine, name. they were in Pine Grove and now they have their own uh, project I've called heard, Jody. Yeah. Um, so it's kind of like that uh, country emo vibe. <laughs> it's really, really good. Is country plus emo just folk? No, <laughs> I don't know no, that. I don't think so. And then folk, and then there's like folk punk, mm. which is yeah. There's a lot. Too many genres. I like so. music. Yeah, <laughs> that's. You really I, like that Hodera record? Yeah, I thought that was very good. We're playing with oh, Hodera. Did that come out? Cool. Uh, yeah, it yeah, came a couple out. weeks ago. That record's really cool. Yeah, when's mm-hmm. that show? You guys are open for that? December third. Yeah. Yeah. I'll be there. Oh. Cool. Um, all right, let's go to you. Can we come back right, to Jane. me? Yeah, we'll come back to you. So, I honestly think, like, the two dopest records that came out this year, obviously, like, super biased because it's, like, two of my best friends are in that band. Um, but I think the Oso Oso record, the Yoon Han mixtape, yeah. is just goddamn incredible. Yeah. I remember, like, <laughs> so Aaron would show me, like, demos of it when they were recording it. And one time he logged into his SoundCloud on my phone. And he just like never logged out of it. So I was still listening to those four or five songs that were demoed for like weeks and they were on tour and I just didn't tell them and I would keep listening to them and I'd be like, yeah, you guys want to hear some new Oso? Oh man. <laughs> and I, would just, like, I wish I knew you back then. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I would do that. But uh, the other record I think is really incredible. Like I'm super obsessed with the Boy Rex record. Um, oh, I haven't even listened to that. That record is insanely good. Um, it's called Better Vision, like from start to, f- and it's just like every single song is like really, really good. They're signed to Near Mint. Um, they, uh, it's, it's got some good stuff. Mm-hmm. Near Mint's putting out a lot of great music. Yeah. I'm like really into what they do. Um, but yeah, that Boy Rex records is so good. Like, uh, that's gonna be a very big influence on our new record. Sure. Like, um, that, that was actually an, uh, gonna be a question. It's like, is there any newer influence on 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 the next on the upcoming Puppy Brother release? Um, it's really funny because like. I'll be sitting down with Jana. I'm like, oh yeah, this is what I want this next record to sound like. I'll be like, point, like listening to this. It's usually just like Weatherbox or like Weezer or something like that okay. in there. But a lot of it's gonna. Sound, I'm really into. Um, we get a lot of like comparison to Joyce Manor too. So I like how like Joyce Manor does certain things now. Like you know, it's really cool how raw the older stuff sounded. But now like you listen to like the newer record they put out last year, Cody, and there's songs on there that are just like. Like you were saying earlier before, like, oh, do you ever think about like writing songs for like mainstream, I guess, mm-hmm. is that? And like, I look at Cody and I'm just like, yeah, there's some songs in here that just still sound like Joyce Manor, but they're still like, for a, like, they're just written stronger for like a wider a audience. Wider appeal, yeah. And uh, I kind of like looking at that too. Um, but yeah, I just gotta say again, that Boy Rex record is so good. Also, <laughs> Phoebe Bridgers. Ooh, that record's and really Land cool. Of Talk. The Land of Talk record's really good. The Always record from this year was really yeah. good too. Yeah. Um, Smidley's really good. It's the guy from uh, Oh yeah, Connor from Foxing. Foxing. Yeah, so many. Th- Didn't this they get their gear stolen? 
they might have. Oh, who? Foxing or either Foxing or or his other projects. I don't know about Smin. I know Foxing did actually. They yeah. Did. Every that's so sad. Yeah, I feel so bad when that stuff happens. And I, then and then the world is. I, I just saw that they had to cancel. Uh, I think one or two shows because their van broke down on the way to the venue. Yikes! Ugh. That just sucks. That sucks. It's so terrible. Much. I don't know this. Yo, DIY tour life. <laughs> yeah. How do you guys? Have you heard that new uh, World Is record? It is alright. Uh, world is. <sighs> what are you looking at me? For? I don't know. I don't know how to like. The World Is is a cool band. I like what they do mm-hmm. for sure. Um, they put out some very interesting stuff. You know, it's a really good record that I'm really looking forward to. That's not even like a thing yet, but the new Sidekicks record. Mm. That's gonna be incredible. Oh, I haven't yeah. listened to the Sidekicks. Oh, oh you'd that's like them, that's Josh. the influence yeah. that Josh, you okay. would like oh, them. Yeah, the yeah. Sidekicks. Um, they have this one record uh, that came out a couple years ago called Awkward Breeds, and that's like the definition of like what I think is like the coolest sounding tone. Yeah, uh, I remember like the first time I heard the Sidekicks. Uh, Jade and I were in. Jade from Oso. Yeah, we were in a we were in a guitar center, like just talking about music and stuff. And like one of his friends like happened to be there, and he's just like, "Yo, man, you like really gotta check out this record, like blah blah blah." And he's like, "Oh yeah, like why?" He's like, "Yo, this shit sounds like Weezer like so much." <laughs> and he like plays it off his phone, and I was just like, "Wait, did he say this band sounds like Weezer?" Sign me up. <laughs> um, but yeah, the Sidekicks are tight. <laughs> I'm really excited for the Headspell record. Ooh, Headspell, yeah, Headspell. those are our really good friends. Yeah. They also recorded with Billy Menino. Yeah, I, I, I saw them when. Did you guys play that Creative Corner show? Yeah, that they played. Too? Both of us did. Yeah. yeah, big fan played that too. We did. Did you? Yeah, remember it was like yeah, awesome Headspell and that wasn't the P Daddy show, was it? No, no. no. Oh, Prince Daddy is also. They're probably gonna put. They yeah, just they put just out a split. So yeah, they just put a split with Mom Jeans. Mom Jeans is playing tonight. Yeah, I'm go- at, we're yep, going. going. Are you going? You can't fucking oh, go. Oh right, you're TA. TA. Uh, so, right. Well, tell me how that is. Yeah. Subtweet. Yeah. Pictures, yeah. pictures of Vernon also put out a really Hell cool yeah. record. Yeah. This year They're was like. Sick. It was really funny because one of the biggest reasons why I put out a record this. I mean, obviously, like I've been wanting to put out a record, but like this year, I was just like, is gonna be an incredible year for like yeah. music in general. Yeah, like, it has been. It has been. Like yeah. there is, it's like really hard for me to even make my album of the year list. Like mm-hmm. I just don't even know what else to put. Like Max Seal's record's amazing. Oh, fuck yeah. yeah. Like oh, there's so much good stuff. I gotta, I'm gotta, gotta get them in here because I gotta <laughs> talk to them. Such good kids. I love yeah. it. It's, I gotta get them. I gotta get Jade in here too. Oh, for sure. And, well, I know he's busy right now, but <laughs> yeah, just a little, <laughs> just a little busy. busy. <laughs> it's actually mad funny. Like a couple couple years ago before Puppy Brother was even fully a thing um, our friend Tyler who's in Headspell they were in another project uh, called him and that shirt you're wearing the shirt I'm wearing <laughs> Whoa. oh yeah. like him like H-Y-M-N okay yeah yeah, yeah. I love Heartograms oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah we were gonna put out a split uh, with him and Max Seal before I even knew, knew anyone in Max Seal I remember Aaron our drummer he Hit me up. He's like, Yo, Neve, you really gotta check out this record. <sighs> That's me. <important. laughs> He's like, Yo, you got, you're gonna really love this. And he puts me onto the record, and uh, I listened to Max Seal, and I started becoming friends with them over Twitter. And then one day, I was at a, mod- a modern baseball show, and three of the kids from Max Seal were just there. And they're like, Oh yeah, you're Neve, right? Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> and uh, yeah, this is kind of crazy. Like, it's just really cool. Like, all of my friends have put out records this year. Yeah, it's awesome. It's like really refreshing. Cool. Yeah, I don't know what else I could say. I just. Uh, <laughs> Support your local bands. Seriously, <laughs> yes. Oh, that's that's what the show is all about. Half, half wave. wave. I'm half just wave throwing cool. that out there because I fucking was, love uh, half wave. Was the lead singer half wave in Pine Grove? Nandi? Yeah, she still is. Mm-hmm. Yeah. She still is, right? Yeah. Yeah. Most of half half wave is members from. Yeah, it's basically Pine gotcha. Grove, essentially. Yeah. Right. Such talent. Oh yeah. yeah. And also, like I, I just cannot stop listening to the new to the new Slaughter Beach Dog album. Oh, that record. Yeah, we is need really to cool. we need to keep Walk. listening to that. I really like that EP they put out. Yeah, the EP is great. Um, yeah, it's called Mo- motorcycle.jpg. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they came out. It's been a good year for EPs. Yeah. You guys, Max Seal, um, McCafferty had a good uh, good EP. You know, what's Mansions. Re- you know who put Mansions. out a really good record? Um, I really like Flower Boy. Oh yeah, the that's Tyler the Creator. That's record. good. Yeah, that, you know that, what it it's is. Good like that you mentioned that. When I was younger, I used to be this huge Odd Future nerd. <laughs> like I remember, I went to the record release show that had like Earl's first show ever, mm-hmm. and they played the Damn. last song off that Volume Two record, uh, Oldie, where it's like Frank Ocean's on it and like a bunch of other rappers. And like they're not even really a collective anymore, Odd mm-hmm. Future. Uh, so that was really cool. And like now it's just like Tyler's putting out content that's like super super mature. I feel like yeah. kind of well. Flower Boy was yeah. like a big step up for him. I Yo, think, it's in my so opinion. good. Like yeah. every song on that, like really hits. Like super about it. Um, I don't know, I'm trying to think of other stuff. <laughs> uh, recently, I've been pushing um, 
this band North Star mm-hmm. onto the genre. I know North Star. It's really cool. Well, I mean, not 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 just North Star. Uh, the the solo project the homie has. Oh, uh, Casano. Casano yeah. is really good. Casano. Yeah, you would you. So North Star was on like Triple Crown Records back when Brand New was a band, Whoa. but like Brand New was on that label. Oh, so like who else? Brand New. <laughs> yeah, it's like who's gonna pay attention to that band kind of thing? Yeah. But yeah. like they're super cool. I like uh, recently we've been trying to like figure out a way to cover one of their songs. Mm-hmm. Like, right. Cool. Yeah. Well, okay. I think it's about time we wrap up the episode. Yeah. Um, I guess. I guess. I just want to thank you guys once again for coming on. And uh, thank do you, you. guys uh, have anything you guys want to say to the audience? Uh, to the studio audience. Yo, don't be a ween. Yeah. Um, Mostly that. Yeah, I hate weens. <laughs> I hate weens. <laughs> like the band Ween? No, no, they're fine. No, they're, they're good. They're right. Dude, Ocean Man. Ocean Man. That's a certified <clears throat> bop. <laughs> that shit slaps. Dude, have you heard their first record? I thought that was their only record. No, <laughs> dude, go listen to Ween's very first record, cool. and uh, like, if all you know about Ween is Ocean Man, their no, first no. record is is completely I've different. Heard more. Cool. They're oh. like they're like a like a thrash skate punk band. Nice. I love Tony Hawk. And it's <laughs> yeah, it's like, but like it, it's it. I I, cu- I actually couldn't even listen to it. I I didn't like it very oh, much. Oh gosh. Sorry. Okay, I got one thing to say. Yeah, go for it. If the creators, if the creators of Futurama are ever listening. <laughs> I have a bet with my friend Kevin Cabello, <laughs> where if Futurama comes back Pickle. within the, <laughs> Pickle. Pickle. if the show comes back within the next ten years, I get money from him. I don't want to have to pay him oh <laughs> that, my that God. same money. How much money? I think it's like up to forty dollars an hour. Or so oh, okay. Jesus. Are, so there's like interest on it. Yeah, I think like we just like kept like doubling down or so. Yeah. Yeah, but uh, kind of sucks. <laughs> I just love Futurama. The I love Futurama's animation. True. Yeah. So yeah. if there, if anyone's listening for some reason, <laughs> I just want to say hi. I just want to say hi. I don't know if I was talking say into hi the to microphone. Everyone? Yeah, just hi. Okay. Yo. Yo. Hi. 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 Hello. Hey. It's weird right. that you're saying hi at the end of the show because we're hey. about to say goodbye. You're going to put it at the beginning. <laughs> sure. Yeah, I'll put that <laughs> at the beginning. <laughs> okay. Is, and now let's end awesome. the show. Cool. All right. Nice so, uh, yeah, thank you guys. Thank Puppy Brother again for being on here. Or thank half you. of Puppy Brother. But thank you guys for being here. Um, for anyone out there, you can connect with The Noise in Your Head on Facebook. You can find us on Instagram and Twitter. On Twitter, we are at Noise and Heads. I believe the same goes for Instagram. Maybe. I don't know. But uh, you can also email in at thenoiseinyourhead at gmail.com. And uh, if you are a local artist in Long Island or even not in Long Island and you think that you want to be interviewed on the show, I'd love to have you. So. Uh, be sure to, to message me on any of those platforms, whether it be Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, or email. Uh, and that does it for this week's episode of The Noise in Your Head. And uh, we'll see you next week. Bye. <laughs> Later, guys. <laughs> All right, cool. Cool. That was fun. Hell yeah. yeah. Did you guys have fun? Yeah, it was I always get like awkwardly awesome. jittery for no reason. Yeah, Why well, because we were drinking coffee. I chugged a whole coffee. giant cup from that Epcot mug oh, when really? I was at my house talking to my mom. Well, I had a shot of espresso, so my hands are going at about 900 miles an hour. Oh, yeah. I'm like, <laughs> did you see this? Yeah. Man, no, I'm sorry. I didn't know this. I didn't want you guys to feel bigger. Oh, no, oh. no. Good. My bad. Go pee. Did you pee before we recorded? Oh, I thought you because you mentioned you had to. I usually let it record it.
Oh, that went well. That was fun. We were a little over time, but it's okay. Sorry, guys. Like, were we under an hour? Yeah. Because we had all that. We had the. Oh, we stopped it. But we had that chunk in the beginning. Ooh. We had so much in the beginning. Yeah. So much chunk in the beginning. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> it's still recording, so, so we can add all no, this. Not. Yes, it is. It is. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I have to We go have again. so much chunk at the beginning. It's not even <laughs> funny. <laughs> Too much chunk.